Hello everyone, I'm Bernali Das, an MS student from Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Kolkata. I would like to thank the organizers for providing me with the opportunity to share my research. The topic of my presentation is non-Gaussian imprints on cosmic microwave background, which is based on my paper with Dr. Raghavendra, that is indirect imprints of primordial non-Gaussianity on cosmic microwave background. This is the content of my talk. I will give a brief introduction before proceeding to non-Gaussianity, where I shall talk about imprints of primordial non-Gaussianity in CMB and how we can relate it to single field inflationary models. During this, I shall explain about our methodology specifically and its application to simple templates and realistic models. Our universe is well described by the Lambda CDM cosmology, which is the parametric form of the Big Bang theory. However, it has certain problems like the horizon and flatness problem, which is solved by inflation. Inflation is the accelerated expansion of the universe. Generally, it is driven by a scalar field called inflaton, denoted by phi. Apart from the background, we have perturbations in inflaton field as well as in the metric because of quantum fluctuations. These perturbations can be separated into scalar, vector, and tensor perturbations. We shall only focus on scalar perturbations here. We can write the gauge invariant curvature perturbation for scalars as r equal to psi plus h del phi divided by time derivative of phi naught where del phi comes from the perturbed inflaton field and psi from the perturbed metric. Phi naught is the background inflaton field without perturbations and h is the Hubble parameter. The scalar perturbations follow the equation one where rk is the Fourier transform of r. If we compute the two-point correlation of the curvature perturbation rk, we get power spectrum given in equation two. Now, how do we connect this power spectrum to the observable at hand, that is the cosmic microwave background, shortly called CMB? The CMB is the earliest and farthest we can see, and it is almost a black body with small anisotropies. If we measure the temperature for single pixel values of the CMB sky and lay them as a histogram, we will see a nearly Gaussian or normal distribution as can be seen as the dashed line in this figure on the right. Here the x-axis uh, delta is the difference between observed temperature and CMB black body temperature. The first moment that is mean is zero. The second moment that is the standard deviation is non-zero and can be related to angular power spectrum CL which in turn can be related to the power spectrum we studied in previous slide using equation three. Similarly, the third moment determines skewness and is related to the three-point correlation or the bispectrum and so on. If the CMB is Gaussian, it can be captured by this bispectrum. In the figure, we can see the effect of non-Gaussianity for FNL equal to 1000 and 5000, where FNL is the measure of non-Gaussianity. We shall see the definition of FNL in the upcoming slides. In single field inflationary model, non-Gaussianity can arise from non-linear dynamics because of the self-interaction of inflaton. So we can write action for the inflaton field whose zeroth order will give us the background dynamics. Second order in R will give perturbation whose two-point correlation gives the power spectrum. And the third order action in R will give us interaction terms proportional to R square, which can be reflected in Y spectrum. Till now, we have dealt with Gaussian curvature perturbation RK. After this, uh, this slide, we shall refer this Gaussian curvature perturbation as RKG, 
and curvature perturbation with non-Gaussian corrections as RK. As before, equation 4 shows the Gaussian power spectrum, which is the two-point correlation of RKG. Equation 5 shows the three-point correlation of RK, which is given by the bispectrum denoted by function B here. In equation 5, if we take three-point correlation of RKG instead of RK, we should get zero by the definition of Gaussian function. In literature, there are various ways to put constraints on non-Gaussianities, and we are following one of those ways. As I have already told before, the third order action in R will give us interaction terms proportional to R square, which can be reflected in bispectrum. So to account for the non-Gaussianity, we add an additional term of R k square to the Gaussian perturbation with a coefficient FNL. This FNL will tell us about the non-Gaussian behavior of R k. In general, this FNL is taking, uh, taken to be a constant but uh, we will consider it to be a function of k. Previously, we took two-point correlation of RKG only. Now we uh, take two-point correlation of equation six and we get equation seven, where we have our Gaussian power spectrum along with the correction term, which we shall refer to as PC. For details about this new method, please refer to these papers in the footnote. But to find this uh, corrected power spectrum PC, we need to know FNL. So we take three-point function of equation six, as you can see here. Uh, using Weeks theorem, we can write three-point function in terms of FNL and PX. Inverting this equation gives the definition of FNL in terms of bispectrum and PX as given in equation eight. Now, for a given uh, model, if we know the Gaussian power spectrum PS and by spectrum B, we can easily write the FNL for that model and then write the corrected power spectrum for that model. Let us now move to our result section. For some of the templates and realistic models, I shall show the uh, PC and we will see how much the parameters can be varied so that the PC is comparable to the Gaussian power spectrum PS, which should mean perturbativity may be breaking down. Even if it is around 10% of PS, it can still leave significant imprints. At first, we have power law, the local type bispectrum template, and we get the correction to power spectrum, which has the parameter FNL local. The figure here shows the temperature-temperature autocorrelation angular power spectrum of CMB, which can be obtained from the power spectrum expression using a code called CAM. The red line is the power law. Black dots are data points from Plan 2018. We can see that the FNL local value for PC to be comparable to PS is around 5,000 which is much larger than the existing direct constraint on the FNL local written in the red text. Next, we have orthogonal template for bispectrum. And although the uh, uh, FNL orthogonal value needed to make PC comparable to PS is an order smaller than FNL local, it is not within its existing direct constraint given in red text. Uh, we have similar story for equilateral template which I won't be showing here. The PC for these models may not come close to PS because of the tight constraints. However, there are other models which I shall discuss where our method works better, where we do not have direct constraints on FNL. Now, let us come to a non-trivial oscillatory template used in some inflationary models with its own power spectrum and bispectrum. We compute PC using the power spectrum and by spectrum. It has three parameters, FNL oscillatory, B and omega. Figure here shows the variation of uh, FNL oscillatory. We can see that the PC reaches close to PS even within the theoretically expected value of around 500. 
On the left panel, we have the variation of PS in shades of red to yellow and PC in shades of blue to green. On the right, we have the corresponding angular power spectrum plot. We are varying the parameter B, which determines the strength of oscillations. Here we are uh, adding the parameter omega, which determines the frequency. Unlike previous templates, PS and PC both change for this template. As we vary the parameters B and omega, PC shows pronounced oscillatory patterns than PS. So this model can be a good candidate for us to constrain its parameter parameters using our method and get a better fit. Let us come to a more realistic model in literature given by Starovinsky. It is given by this potential with a change in slope at phi naught. Computing PC analytically was non-trivial, so we solved it numerically. Uh, just to show how non-trivial it was, here is the contour plot and corresponding 3D plot of the integrand of PC with X and Y as the variables. We have four parameters here for the model, V0, A plus by V0, A minus by V0, and K0. Out of this, we shall not vary V0 and A minus by V0 as they determine the amplitude of PS, which is already constrained. We shall only vary A plus by V0 and K0. Just like in previous case, we have power spectrum in the left panel and corresponding angular power spectrum on the right for the variation of these two parameters. As A plus by V naught value is increased, the oscillatory patterns are more pronounced in PS as expected. However, for PC shown in blue and green colors, it is interesting to note that the highest amplitude is achieved when A plus by V naught is twice that of A minus by V naught, especially over large K range. Increasing K naught shifts the oscillations to the right for both PS and PC. As K naught is increased, the oscillatory patterns shift toward larger, towards larger L values in CLs due to PS shown in yellow to red. However, the amplitude of CLs due to PC decrease with increase in K0. FNL for this model has not been constrained so far, so we have a way to constrain FNL using our method. In conclusion, I have told why and how we are hunting for non gaussianities Then I briefly explained our paper where we use an indirect method of constraining FNL. Using that method, we show that the correction to power spectrum due to FNL from models with features in their potential give rise to non-negligible corrections to the angular spectrum of CMD. There has also been works in the community on finding non-gaussianities using the method of loop correction for smaller scales. Our method is equivalent to it, but it covers large scales. As of our future work, we shall perform Monte Carlo analysis of these models against Plan 2018 data set. These are some major references apart from those shown in footnotes. Uh, thank you for your kind attention.